I will call the Thursday, August 20th, 2009, meeting to order. Our invocation tonight will be led by Grant Smith, a 12th grader at Dutchtown High School. Our pledge tonight will be led by Mr. Robert Burgess, the Chief Operating Officer and President of ETEL. Dear Lord, we ask you to bless everyone that's come here tonight. Share this time, Lord. Bless everyone that serves on our council for us and keeps our community safe and in line. Lord, just uh, ask you to bring us all together and live as a happy community. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Grant. Mr. Burgess. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Robert. Roll call, Ms. Suzanne, all present, with the exception of Councilman Benny Johnson, who's at work. Councilman, I'll ask for a chair addition. I'll need a uh, two-thirds vote to introduce um, uh, ordinance for junk and abandoned vehicles and white goods. Motion. Second. Motion Second. by Councilman, who, who was that? Adrian Thompson, second by Councilman Randy Kluart. Any discussion? Any objection? Councilman will make this 9B. Public comment period. Anyone wish to speak on any item on the agenda, please sign up. Ms. Suzanne, you'll be allowed three minutes. We'll get right into our presentations tonight. We're recognizing the qualifiers for the state and the national rodeo finals. <coughs> Young men and women from our parish that uh, really did good uh, in the, in the uh, state and the uh, national. Would y'all come forward, please? Head is that big? <laughs> Mike and Vicky wag us back. That's uh, Mr. Grant Smith. Grant has been a veteran of this. I think it's the second time you've been up here, and I certainly congratulate you. Clint Myers, state qualifier for 
Bull riding. <laughs> Kitty DeBeer. Kitty, the state qualifier for breakaway roping. Good. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Shannon Heath. State qualifier for pole bending. We got two pole benders. Here. <laughs> oh, I got Blake to be it. That's okay. We'll get, we'll get it right. Here's Jenna. Cameron right here. <laughs> Come on, Blake. We'll take you with it. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm going to just read Blake's. It said, the parish of Ascension is proud to present the certificate to Blake DeVere for finishing third in shoot dog dogging and qualifying for nationals in the Louisiana High School Rodeo State Championship Wrangler Division, as well as being a state qualifying breakaway roping and goat tie. We join with the parish council in offering our congratulations. <laughs> Elise Gilray. The state qualify in three events. Let's see what they are. Is it, is it Elise or Elise? Elise. Yeah. Yeah. And girls breakaway roping, go tying, and ribbon roping. So congratulations. I think all of y'all should be awarded letters in high school. Any of the parents that are here tonight, stand up, please. Your parents? Yes, please. Stand up. Next, we'll move into our Paris Prison Report Prescription Drug Plan Program. Yes, I'm pleased to announce that uh, Ascension Parish, as a member of NACO, uh, the National Organization of Counties, will take advantage of their Prescription Drug Card Program beginning November 2, 2009. This program is free and open to all Ascension Parish residents, both insured and uninsured. And this card allows them to receive up to 22% off their prescription medication. There is no cost to the parish or residents. This is a benefit the parish receives for being a member of NACO. This program offers value, a large national network, uh, pharmacy network, excellent customer support, and features the Ascension Parish logo on front of the card. Residents should watch for more in information on Channel 21 and in their local newspapers. So, uh, Ms. Sherry Kenshin, you want to? Maybe give us a little briefing on this. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. Um, I think he pretty well summed it up. Some of you had approached uh, me about taking advantage of this program, and you had talked with other parishes. Um, just to summarize um, what 
parish president said, it's easy to participate. There are no fees, no forms to fill out, no age or income requirements. There are no costs to the county, taxpayers or consumers. CVS Caremark negotiates the discounts directly with the participating pharmacies. Neither NACO nor the participating counties receive any revenue from the program. Everyone in the parish is uh, eligible and consumers will always receive the lowest retail price. Uh, but you must be a NACO member to participate. So I just, uh, these are the participating pharmacies. So I'll just scroll down real quick for you. And Councilman, all of you should have this in a packet that we provided to you. You can see that it's the major chains as well as some of the smaller uh, family-owned pharmacies. On page 13 of your handout for the NACO drug card program, it has some frequently asked questions. And the um, public information officer and human resources, as well as uh, the health unit, will be getting some of this information out when we receive our media kit. So if you have any questions, you can look on there. It pretty much has everything that you want to know about the program. Uh, I think it's a, a great thing. I want to thank Councilman Dennis Cullen for pushing us on this, as well as Mr. Martinez uh, also um, for making us find out more about it. I think it's going to be a great program. Uh, if you watched Channel 2 last night, our public information officer did a nice story on it and kind of gave an overview. So watch on Channel 21 and in the newspaper as we bring the uh, residents of Ascension Parish a better quality of life. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. President? Uh, I have <coughs> received a letter today, and I, I want to share it with you under my report. Uh, we're going to do an official uh, press release in the near future with our state delegation but, uh, and with DEQ. But I'm going to read this letter. Uh, it says to the Honorable Parish, well, Honorable Tommy Martinez and Parish Council uh, regarding wastewater sewer improvement project. Dear President Martinez, congratulations. After a careful preliminary technical review of the information you submitted in your Clean Water State Revolving Fund loan application, your wastewater sewer improvement project has been recommended for funding through the CWSRF program in the amount of $18 million. This funding will be in the form of low interest uh, with a fixed rate of 0.95% in a 20-year payback term. Your project is, re is recommended for the loan in FY 2010 based on the premise that you can incur debt, have the demonstrated ability to repay the debt, can meet all the standard technical and engineering requirements, as well as all conditions that are required under the state and federal guidelines to close this loan. Your timely response to this letter confirming your, your municipality's ability to meet the financial technical engineering requirements in all applicable state and federal laws to properly close on this loan is essential. Should you fail to respond in the next 30 days or unable to meet any of the aforementioned uh, state or federal conditions or requirements necessary to close on this loan, we will use the funds to support the next municipality in line and will reconsider your application in FY 2011. Once again, your timely response to this letter is critical. But again, bottom line is uh, this is great news for Ascension Parish. Uh, Mr. Grant, uh, has been working on this. We have all the paperwork ready to send to them. Uh, this is something that we came to you earlier, and we, we actually applied for $53 million, but we have $18 million, uh, so we're going to, at the next utility meeting, we're going to uh, formally uh, go through the entire process uh, with you and then bring it back to the council. So. Okay, so thank you. Okay. Any, uh, any discussion with the president? Okay, sir. thank you. Next, we'll move into our consent agenda section. Uh, Councilman, I have, I have told you all before the meeting, I'll, I'll say it again on uh, item 7K. <coughs> uh, there's a typo. Oak Alley Estate should read Old Dutch Town. We 7Q, debris removal monitoring. We will defer to next meeting. Just the second part of that contract. And I'll need a motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Adrian Thompson. Second. Second by Councilman Dennis Cullen. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I got a little discussion on uh, R, which is a consultant selection of the traffic cameras. Yes, sir. I had a couple of constituents have been coming to me. Uh, I don't know if y'all have been up, to, uh, up against some red lights at, like on Highway 431 with no turn lanes. 
you have to sit there and sometimes you got to sit there through three traffic lights before you can turn so they are turning a lot of times on yellow sometimes red they are making their turns that's the only way they can get in go place road and a few of these places so i guess my question is if we move on this is the money going to be dedicated for turn lanes signal lanes to improve them because that's where the problems are going to be and and we don't want our constituents you know because right now i can tell you i had quite a few from the santa area come tell me and tell me that uh they run red lights on 431 to get home go place road they can sit there three you know turn signals before they can turn and you know they'll run it on red you know and without a turn if a, without a turn lane i don't see us putting them i guess cameras there until we can improve some turning lanes president that's one Martin. question i got i have one other one after that but go ahead, president Martin. we we put in for actually uh 10 10 turn lanes on highway 431 uh, in fact we uh we, we met today. with the engineers today from DOTD, and I think we're going to end up getting. I know we're putting a bunch in, but I just want to see if one whether we can dedicate the money that we're going to be receiving for this, dedicate it for roads and intersections. Well, is that legal, or well, is that something we're going to look at doing? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's already okay. in the ordinance. If if you read the ordinance, that's what it says in okay. there. Okay, but. 431 again you you you're going to get those improvements uh, that's been approved go place in 431 that's going to be the next intersection that's going to be done they just finished Weber City mm -hmm. uh last year uh we were looking at highway 42 and 431 and Correct. doing a roundabout there uh also some uh widening by the school or the turn lane so you can make a, a wider turn there also at airline in 431 uh so all those projects are now in, in the highway department's projects. Uh, basically, it's going to cost about $10 million to do all of them. Uh, I, we, we're going to get probably, in fact, we're going to make that announcement soon, too, that we'll get uh, about $3 million, hopefully, this year of surplus money to put on those projects on 431. So that's all good news, too. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Representative Smiley's been working hard on trying to get the, some money for these turn lanes also. I've been working with him for the last three or four years, and he's been working to get some money in funding. I guess one other co uh, question is uh, consult the consultant that we are picking tonight, did this have to go out for bids, or is it did go out? Okay. That's the that's second question. That's, that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any more discussion, Councilman? I've got a motion. I've got a second. Any objections? Motion carries. Committee recommendations, uh, utilities uh, committee recommendation, Chairman Adrian Thompson. Yes, thank you, Chairman Bell. Uh, <clears throat> agenda item A is uh, was a recommendation from the committee to send a letter to Energy asking them to look at a different route or look at uh, a better way to run that power line from Highway 70, down Highway 73 to Highway 30. Mr. Chairman. A motion by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman George Valentine. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. Uh, agenda, uh, change order, uh, which is a mistake on the agenda for Country uh, Ridge, was the uh, substantial, it was, it's a substantial completion. That was a typo? Typo. Okay. Motion by Councilman Joseph. Second. Second by Councilman Todd Lambert. And it also was a recommendation from the uh, Utilities Committee. Okay. Uh, I think y'all should have everything in Any know. discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. Uh, Chairman, that letter also was supposed to go to the PSC. Ask oh. them to look into it. I see it listed, right. Public Service Commissioner. Okay. All right, Thank sir. Anything else, Jim? That's it. Thank you. Okay, sir. Item 9, Strategic Planning Committee. Chairman Kent Shakespeare. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we just wanted to, uh, this has been uh, going around for 
uh, a couple of years, and now we've finally gotten to the point where we have it uh, before the council, and we no, wanted to make sure that everybody had an opportunity to uh, bring out anything uh, for discussion on the uh, junk and abandoned vehicles and white goods located on private property. And with none of that, then I'd like to go to uh, B. To, to B as, as move the ordinance motion. as it was presented. Second. A motion by Councilman Adrian Thompson, second by Councilman Chris Lohr. Any discussion? Discussion. Councilman Lohr. I just want to congratulate Councilman Shake Snyder and the other folks on the uh, Strategic Planning Committee. I think this is a great ordinance, something that's been in discussion for a long time. And to, to finally get this done, I think, is a, a great example of a parish that's in transition. So thank you. And, uh, also wanted to announce that we'll probably, I think Mr. Grant said, sometime before the end of the year, we'll be able to implement our uh, uh, parish court where we can bring these ordinances and enforce them. And uh, we will have enforcement of them. Very good, Councilman Shake Snyder. Any more discussion? Uh, no, that's good, uh, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Item 10, Finance Committee, Chairman Chris Lohr. This was the item uh, on the Finance Committee meeting that we did not have any documentation for. So if you've, if you've looked at this in your packets, basically it's an insurance claim um, for $10,558.83 um, for a auto accident and releasing us from any further claims. If, you, if there's any further discussion um, about it, um, Mr. Cedric Grant or, or Ms. Manda could enlighten you all further. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Olive Joe, second by Councilman Adrian Thompson. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. General business, resolution, special counsel in the alligator bayou suit. Mrs. Manda? Additional counsel to handle this this lawsuit, and we were also served with another uh, regarding the same uh, the matter. So it's a necessary step to hire outside counsel. So moved. Moved by Councilman Second. George Valentine. Second. Second by Councilman Kent Shake Snyder. Any discussion? Yes, discussion. Uh, Councilman Valentine. Chairman, um, Miss uh, Miss Manda. Of course, let me first let me say the. Um, Alligator Bayou, of course, naturally is a um, near and dear to, to District 8, uh, part I represent. Uh, uh, right off the bat, I really don't care if the uh, attorney wins or not on this one, since it uh, brings back the level of the water. But um, but I do uh, am requesting, Miss Manda, we do not have, or Mr. Grant, uh, we do not have a contract in front of us for for the council, for the special council, which is required by by our um, charter. Charter requires uh, the contract. The contract would would not exceed fifty thousand. It would be included on the that's, finance that, report. That's, that's not stipulated in our charter, Miss Manda. Um, section um, five. If you read, it says no special counsel shall be retained by the parish except for a written contract approved for favorable majority vote of governing body. So I would suggest that that means that we should see the contract. We have a draft of the contract. In fact, we've used this uh, gentleman before, but this is a necessary step to send to the attorney yeah. general's office, and, and that's I, what we're most interested I, in getting I, I accomplished at this point. I agree. We've used him before, but before we used him, we also didn't get a contract. So I mean, we, you know, the council. It's 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 our situation. We get representative. We ought to know how much we're getting paid to get representative and how much we're doing. It's a matter of, of money and finances. So I'd suggest in the future when we do something like this that we have the contract before the council. Okay, any all. more di any more discussion? Any objection? Resolution passes. Presentation of Home Rule Charter Commission. Have the presentation by Chairman Milton Cluart. How you doing, gentlemen? Uh, Home Rule Charter Commission would like to present uh, recommendations of our uh, report. And Mr. Poche is handing y'all each one. Okay, thank y'all. Thank you for your service. What we will do in 60 days, we'll convene on this Home Rule Charter. If any one of y'all have any questions or anything like that, just feel free to contact us. We'll be glad to help y'all. Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Thank you, Bill. Yes, sir. Thank you, Bill. Let, let me just publicly again from the council thank uh, the members 
uh, Mr. Robert and Mr. Milton, especially for chairing it, the, uh, the tedious task of uh, what you guys and ladies went through, and we appreciate y'all's uh, effort in that very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Okay. Okay, we will get into our introduction of ordinance section. Item 13, introduction of ordinance, budget amendment number five to amend the ordinance approving, adopting, and appropriating the 2009 operating and capital budget for the Parish of Ascension, adopted by the Ascension Parish Council on the 20th day of November, 2008. Motion to introduce, Mr. Motion Chairman. introduced Second. by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second by Councilman Randy Kluart. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Item 14, to authorize the lease of one tract of land currently owned by the Parish of Ascension to Capital City Family Health Center. So moved. Motion by Councilman Adrian Thompson, second by Councilman Oliver Joseph. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Item 15, we also have a typo. Gary Wayne Dunbar and Gary Wayne Dunbar. Scratch the second Dwayne Dunbar out. To acquire removable property from Gary Wayne, Dwayne Dunbar and Tanya Bridgewater Dunbar in the amount of $18,875 and to pay severance damages to the remainder of the property in the amount of $71,625 for a total payment of $90,500. So Mr. Chairman. Move by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Kent Shakespeare. Any discussion? Question. Councilman Adrian Thompson. Uh, how much land is this? We have our representatives here, and maybe he can explain the whole situation and, and uh, uh, what this ordinance is Mr. about. Mr. Rabelais? Mr. Rabelais, you here? Good evening. 0.3 acres. 0.3 acres. Yes, sir. There's uh, the required right of way is uh, 47, 4,789 square feet. It's approximately a third of the total land area of that lot. Mr. Rabelais. Uh, okay, Parish President. I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson. You got any? Go ahead. I want to hear what you had to say. You, uh, on, on this lot that, that uh, I know this seems to be like a lot of, it seems like a lot of money for 4,700 square feet. What exactly are we paying this gentleman for and this, this family for? We're paying Mr. Dunbar for the acquisition of the property that's uh, located between his house and Roddy Road. He sits on a corner lot. The required right-of-way comes within approximately four feet of his house. So we're buying about a third of the property. Uh, we've had the property uh, appraised by uh, Jim Lipscomb, who's done quite a bit of appraisal work in the parish. Uh, he feels that the, the value of the land is 18, I believe it's 18 to 20,000 with some minor improvements such as uh, some concrete paving, but that there will be a diminution in value to the home when he sells it at a later date should he sell it. It's the severance damages uh, that would accrue to that property. The property has a before value of approximately $175,000, $180,000. So if we don't buy this property, uh, we, we, talk, we don't pay for these damages up front, and we buy them out, we'd have to pay yes, sir. moving costs also? When I met with Mr. Dunbar initially, we, we looked, and he wasn't uh, particularly happy with, with having the right-of-way line come in that close. And there was some discussion about relocation. We have relocated other people that, that were somewhat further back from this. Uh, if we did that and y'all declared it adversely impacted so that you could buy him out, because of the fact that you didn't hit the house, we can't force him to sell it to you. But if you declared it, if he agreed and you declared it adversely impacted, then we would start relocation proceedings. And I can't say for sure, but I believe it would probably end up in the long run costing you more money. So if we bought him out, you'd say it would cost us about a hundred and what eighty thousand. Yes, sir. And then, of course, you would have possession of the home, and then uh, if we sell the you house, have to, you have to dispose of the house. And uh, the way we look at it now, according to the appraiser, he feels that that if the house were sold after the acquisition, that Mr. Dunbar would get approximately fifty cents on the dollar to what he could get if he sold it prior to anything happening on this project. 
then the parish is put in a position of owning the real estate for a period of time, probably until the end of the construction time. Uh, the, the odds of moving it during construction may be fairly rare. And then you would have to turn around and dispose of it and, and do it at a, at a public auction, I believe. And uh, if you would get more than seventy-five or eighty thousand dollars, you would come out ahead. Point of order, Mr. Please. Chairman. <laughs> well done. This is an introduction. To be very honest with you, Council, we should not be discussing it. The reason why is because it hadn't even been published yet. You have to introduce it for it to be published. I understand, right? but I got some I understand, questions. Mr. Chair, I like that. But what this does is makes it a one-sided conversation <coughs> because the general public is not aware of what this ordinance is about, and so you have a one-sided discussion. Well, we're in I, discussion mode, Mr. Rabelais, right now. I, well, but this is a point of order because you do not discuss an ordinance that is introduced. That is done at the public hearing. Just just point of order. Mr. Chairman, you can rule on it. I can ask these Go questions ahead. at the next. There's no problem. I just okay. No, I'm just saying it's, it. I'm just doing it legal, Miss Miss Parrish. I've got a motion. Well, I've I don't got think a this second. is illegal, but any discussion, any objection, ordinance is introduced. To authorize the parish of Ascension through the office of the parish president to enter into a servitude agreement with William Harold Dixon and Mary Lee Dixon. For the property described in Exhibit A. So Move, Mr. Chairman. Moved by Councilman Dempsey Lambert, second by Councilman Randy Cluart. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Public hearing uh, ordinance. Uh, Ms. Lindsay Manor, reading of the ordinance. Item 17. Whereas Ascension Parish is a local governmental subdivision as defined by Article 6, Section 44 of the Louisiana Constitution of 1974, and whereas the Parish of Ascension is the governing, the governing and responsible body over the zoning and regulations within this jurisdiction, and whereas Article 6 of the Home Rule Charter of Ascension Parish adopted May 4, 1993, identifies the process and manner in which to adopt ordinances regulating the lands of this parish, and whereas the Parish Council adopted the present official zoning map on June 30, 2009, and whereas the Parish Council reserves the authority to make changes to the zoning map, whereas the required public notice was advertised on the following dates. Donaldsonville Chief, May 21, 2009, May 28, 2009, June 4, 2009. Gonzales Weekly, May 22, 2009, May 29, 2009, June 8, 2009. Be it ordained by the Ascension Parish Governing Authority that the official zoning map of June 30, 2009 for Ascension Parish, Louisiana is amended as follows. Zoning Review ID 2010.09, Lewis J. Henderson, 1.706 acre tract for Daryl M. Darryl G. May. Located on the northwest corner of LA Highway 73 and Longwood Avenue. To rezone property from medium intensity residential to mixed use to and be more particularly described as follows. A certain small parcel of land situated in the Parish of Ascension, the southeast quarter of Section 2, Township 9 South, Range 2 East, Southeastern Land District of Louisiana, containing approximately 1 and 8 tenths acres, and bounded on east of Old Jefferson Highway, south by the land of Clyde Babin, west by the estates of Vivis Parent, and running north by the private road running from Old Jefferson Highway to the property of the estates of Vivis Parent. Being the part of the same property acquired by Joseph Delon from Dubois Landry on July 1904 by deed recorded in COB 46 Folio 34 of Ascension Parish and acquired by vendors here and by inheritance from their father, Joseph Delon, as shown in the judgment of possession and succession of Joseph Delon, number 2415, a probate document in the Parish of Ascension, signed on the, signed on the day of April 1951 and recorded in COB 94. Folio 162 of Ascension Parish. In the event that any portion of this ordinance is ever held invalid or unconstitutional for any reason by any court of competent jurisdiction over it, such portion shall be deemed a separate, distinct, and independent provision and shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions of the ordinance. I need a motion to open public hearing. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Valentine, second by Councilman Cluart. Anyone wishes to speak on this item, please come forward. You'll be allowed three minutes. Move to close. Move to close Second. by Councilman Valentine. Second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Need a motion to move the ordinance. Move the ordinance, Chairman. Second. Uh, motion by Councilman uh, Valentine. Second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance is approved. Item 20. 
Councilman Todd Lambert. Motion adjourned, Mr. Chairman. Second.